In this video, we're going to go over the connections on a Glowcraft controller. So I've got a brand new Glowcraft controller here, and I wanted to go over the basic connections to it. This video should be pretty short, but i uh, just going to go over the, the basics here. Uh, so the controller itself is inside of a water-resistant box. Um, this is pretty pretty solid you got a gasket in here and then the box itself is hollow so you know theoretically water could get in if you pierced a hole in it or something but in general ip67 you'll be perfectly fine under the hood of a car assuming that nothing's punctured or anything like that uh, this will be perfectly fine and then you've got the two connections on the box itself for those you have both pigtails now keeping in mind on these controllers the pigtails are sold separately they're Fairly expensive plugs. It is something that you might be able to potentially find online for a cheaper price, keeping in mind that th these are not like standard plugs. It, they, they are very specific to the actual plug on the controller itself. So you do have to make sure that these detents all line up with the controller and snap in. So if you go online and you find something that looks pretty close, be very careful if you buy something that it does have the proper lineup for the holes so that they snap in. Uh, obviously, if you get the plugs from us or Glowcraft directly, that won't be an issue. They'll plug right in. Now, on the other end of this, you do have 12 wires on each plug, and those uh, obviously go to different locations, different places. There is a diagram on Glowcraft's website, and we're also going to add a link to that on our website as well in the product description so you have that available to you it is definitely a good tool to have something might even be worth printing out if it's something that you work with enough they've got a pretty nice diagram and i'm going to pull it up on the screen here that will show you the actual connections and the pinouts now one really cool thing about these plugs kind of hard to see but you can see on the back side there right along the gray part it actually has a number so it will actually tell you which wire correlates to which pin. So as you can see in the manual on page 5, it actually has a breakdown of each pin and what they do. So pin 1, 2, all the way through 24. And it will tell you what each wire correlates to that pin. So just keep that in mind. You do have it laid out on the book as to which one is 1 and which one is 12. Uh, the bigger note being that 1 through 12 are on the gray plug and 13 through 24 are on the black one. So for the gray plug, your first four wires here are your power supply units. So those are your five volt inverters that are built in, keeping in mind that those are four amp inverters. There are two of them, so a total of eight amps across both. Uh, so there will be a little bit of a limitation to how much you can actually power with that. So just keep that in mind uh, when deciding whether or not you're going to go with these or use an external power source for that. Uh, and these are only 5 volt. They're not suitable for 12 volt. But we do utilize these when using an external relay or like a power saver. Uh, these can actually activate the power savers. And that way you can use these similar like you would a 12 volt trigger on a ghost so you can use these like you would the 12 volt switches on a ghost plus to activate a relay and our power saver can be activated with just five volts up next you have these six wires which are your six data outs now in many applications you may only be using two it does not matter which two you use just keep in mind which two you did use they will correspond on the manual as to which wire is which data point so just keep that in mind when you're programming everything if you're using data three and data five, that's fine. Just keep in mind when you're creating your panels, when you're laying everything out and designing everything, you're gonna have to focus on channel five and channel three. Last on this plug is your main power and ground. Now this will power up the controller itself and it will also provide power to the four amp inverters that are built in. Now moving on to the black plug. Now for this one, the numbers on the back of this plug are 1 through 12, just like the gray plug. And in the manual, it does say 13 through 24. So you just keep in mind that 13 is actually 1 on this plug. Uh, but 
you have the first eight, which are your triggers. And once again, these are not specific. So there's not like a DRL and a turn signal and a break, but rather just triggers that you can use for whatever purpose you want. And in the case of a car, you're gonna have your turn signals, your DRLs, potentially brakes and reverse if it's in the rear, as well as additional triggers should you decide to utilize them. One of the ways that we used it in our S2000 build was to activate pre-programmed show modes using our power saver output and that A button on the remote. So that might be one way that you might utilize one of those extra triggers. Now your first eight pins, which is the six pins on the top and then these two pins on the side are your eight triggers. Now those triggers can be used for anything like your turn signals, DRLs, brakes, reverse, but they can also be used to trigger show modes that you might pre-program to those wires. These are not pre-selected to be a certain function on the car. You will select that within the app. So it doesn't matter as much which you run where. Uh, just definitely keep in mind wherever you're running them and program them appropriately within. For my own purposes, to keep things simple, more than likely I'll do red for brake, white for parking, and so on and so forth. Just to try to figure out a standard that I know that I use to help cut down on confusion when I'm programming a light. Up next is pin 21. Now this is going to be for your line level audio input. You're just gonna connect that to a power connection uh, within the audio system so that it can actually receive that signal from the head unit or from some other audio device within the car and translate that into a visual signal for the LEDs. And that feature can be activated within the show mode creator under certain animators. Not every animator will actually utilize that, but things like VU uh, as well as a few other modes will utilize that wire and that input. The last three are CAN bus integration wires. And once again, this is something you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you feel comfortable tying in with a car CAN bus system. Just make sure you don't short anything out or cause any serious problems. But uh, in the event that you are feeling adventurous in that way, you have your CAN bus high, your CAN bus low, and your ground. And these are recommended to use shielded wiring. Uh, these are relatively sensitive to noise and other issues within the electrical system. So definitely keep that in mind if you wanna get a clean signal and not have any issues. So that gives you a basic layout of the controller and the plugs. Like I said, this was going to be a pretty short video. There's not a ton to it. As far as actually connecting these wires and running everything, I don't have a harness setup that I am super confident with enough to the point where I would make a video showing how I would do it. I'm still just kind of figuring out the layout and the best way to make this thing as clean as possible. But you know, understanding which wire does what, where it is, uh, once again, that manual being a really good tool, something to have on hand, uh, and then just understanding the plugs themselves, um, making note of the numbers on the back of the plugs. And in the event that you are trying to source your own, making sure that the ones you get have the proper location for the detents so that they slide right into the plugs. We did source these ourselves, so wire color may not match perfectly to what Glowcraft itself is using, but the manual does not reference wire color as much as actual pin. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at hours versus a set that you might've gotten from Glowcraft. So one thing that's kind of cool with these and how they do plug into the Glowcraft controller, once you get a little bit more comfortable with these and you know the diagram and the layout, you can go ahead and make a harness and then after that's complete, connect it to the controller. Whereas something like the Blue Ghost, you'd probably wanna connect it to the controller and then run the wires out. That also means that if for some reason you had an issue later on where the controller went out, you don't have to cut wires or anything to disconnect from the controller like you would a ghost. You can just simply unplug your main plugs, pull the controller out, replace it with a new one, and be on your way. So hopefully this video helped to explain a little bit more about the wires and what each one does. It's not as intimidating as it looks. There's about 24 wires there, but in general, you're probably not gonna use most of them. They are there for you if you do decide to do any expandability. In my case, if I'm doing a light, I probably only got two data lines that I'm gonna use. But you've got another four there if you decide to add to it later on, which is a pretty nice feature. In general, if it's a wire that you're not gonna use, make sure nothing is exposed, tape it off, leave it on the back, and if you ever need it, you can always access it. These controllers and plugs are available right now on nextlevelneo.com. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And as always, visit nextlevelneo.com for all your lighting needs.